Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a cubic equation. We have z cubed equals 1 and we're going to find the z values. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. I'm also going to show you some results from Wolfram Alpha at the end. All right, so first method, I'm going to turn this into a polynomial equation that equals 0, z cubed minus 1 equals 0. Let's subtract 1 from both sides. Hopefully you do know from algebra that z cubed minus 1 can be factored as difference of two cubes. So we can factor it as z minus 1 multiplied by z squared plus z plus 1 equals 0. Now z minus 1 gives us the real solution, the real deal, which is z equals 1. And the other solutions are going to come from the quadratic. Let's use the quadratic formula, negative b, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4, which is negative 3. So we're going to have the negative 3 inside the radical, which indicates that we have non-real complex solutions. So square root of negative 3 can be written as plus minus square root of 3i. So this turns into negative 1 plus minus the square root of 3i divide by 2. Awesome. So we got three solutions. If you want to list them, you can write it as z sub 1 equals 1, and then z sub 2 equals negative 1 plus root 3i over 2, and z sub 3, which is the third solution, is negative 1 minus root 3i over 2. So we got three solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the coordinate system and what they look like. Obviously, z sub 1 equals 1 is easy to graph because it's going to be on the real axis, right? One unit away from 0. So it's the first one. The second one is a little more interesting. We are kind of looking at the point negative 1 half comma root 3 over 2. So that's going to look like the following. Since uh, root 3 is going to be greater than 1 in absolute value, so it's gonna our number is going to look somewhat like this. And let's go ahead and use a different color here as connected to the origin. And what is really important here is the angles. If you know a little bit of trigonometry, this is basically going to give you negative 1 half, and this is going to give you root 3 over 2. So you will, you will know that this is actually, uh, this angle is actually 30 degrees. Okay? And the other one is 60 degrees. So this angle is going to be 90 plus 30, which is 120 degrees. If you express it in radians, it's going to be 2 pi over 3 radians. Make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the other one. It's very similar, but this time we have um, the real and imaginary parts are bo both negative, which means we're going to be in the third quadrant, kind of like we're making something similar uh, in value, so something that looks like this, and this time the angles are going to be different, obviously, right? And we can pretty much look at the same idea. This is going to be a 30 degree angle. Notice that it's smaller than the other one. This is going to be 60 degrees. But the angle measured from the x-axis is going to be 180 plus 60, which is 240 degrees. And that is equivalent to 4 pi over 3. Make sense? Radians are more common. So those are my numbers, and obviously I can express them in polar form. But let's go ahead and do the second method, because the second method is going to give those results directly. Okay? So for the second method, we will use the idea of cube roots of a complex number. Okay? So what is that number? That number is 1. In real world, 1 has a single cube root, which is 1. Because if you just cube root 1, you get 1. If you square root 4, you get positive 2, the principle, right? But in the complex world, a complex number has three cube roots. So one has three cube roots. Why? Because there are three complex numbers whose cube is one. And we're going to check that at the end. But let's go ahead and write one as cosine of 2 pi plus i sine 2 pi. And obviously, you can write this as 2 pi n multiples of 2 pi. Now, the first root you can find, remember, the formula for finding cube roots, and this is 1. Finding cube roots of 1, you're just going to cut the angle in thirds. So you're going to divide the argument by 3, and there's no modulus. Modulus is 1, so you don't have to worry about it. 
and do the same thing for this one and you'll get the answer. Notice that when we graph these on the coordinate system, we notice two angles, 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. That's exactly what it is. And if you are wondering what that's going to look like in standard form, this is what they are. Okay, we can set them equal to that at the end. Well, this one is going to be negative 1 plus root 3i over 2. And the other root, let's call that w sub 1, how do you find it? So, since you have 2 pi and it'll be divided into thirds, and you're going to see it on the graph uh, at the end, we're going to be adding 2 pi over 3 every time. So, if you add 2 pi over 3, you're going to get 4 pi over 3 as the next angle. And that's going to be equivalent to negative 1 minus root 3i over 2. And where does that come from? If you go ahead and evaluate these cosine and sine values, that's what you're going to get. And the final one is the most interesting one, sort of. It's going to be if you add 2 pi over 3 again, you're going to get cosine 6 pi over 3, which is 2 pi. And that brings you back to square 1, sort of. And that's actually equal to 1. It's kind of funny that one of the cube roots of this number is itself, but of course that shouldn't be a surprise because this is the real cube root, right? The cube root of 1 is obviously 1. But there is two more cube roots. Now, why are there three cube roots of a complex number? Let's talk about that, and then I'll show you some results from, from alpha. So let's go ahead and take this number and cube it. So if you cube this number as kind of like cubing, you could probably do the following. You could cube it as a sum, because just use negative 1. Anyways, if you expand it, you're going to get negative 1 plus 3 root 3i cubed minus 3 root 3i times negative 1 plus root 3. I'm kind of using the identity, which looks like this. If you're cubing a plus b, I usually use this for cubic formula too. a cubed plus b cubed plus 3ab times a plus b. That's what I used. Okay? Now let's simplify this i cubed is negative i. That's going to give me negative 1 minus 3 root 3i minus 3 root 3i. i cubed is negative i on then. Obviously, that's going to be multiplied by negative 1, so that's going to be positive. And then when I multiply these, that's going to give me negative 3 times 3 i squared, which is negative 9 times i squared, which is positive 9, okay? And that's all divided by 8. These two cancel out. Negative 1 plus 8 is negative 1 plus 9 is 8. 8 divided by 8 is equal to 1. And so this is the cube of one of the cube roots. So... That shouldn't be a surprise. If you cube one of the cube roots, you should get the original number, which is 1. So let's go ahead and take a look at the results from Wolfram Alpha. Let's see what it gives us. Yay! Good job, Wolfram Alpha. You got the same solutions. The real solution is z equals 1. And they, this is what they look like in the complex plane. Notice that they are equally separated or equally, uh, I don't know how to say that. But basically, this is 120 degrees, this is 120 degrees, this is 120, 120. So that just makes 2 pi or 360 degrees. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.